Not Love with Pat's Two Cents. Here to talk about one of the most difficult dilemmas we live in, which is forgive or not forgive. That is the quandary. Mm, yeah. Well, one of our YouTubers asked me the question, how do I do this? How does God expect? I mean, they just went down the gamut of, of how people have hurt them so and how they have almost turned their unforgiveness onto themselves to make sure that those people know just how much they hurt them. Well, guess what? Nobody's hurting but you. I say this to all of you. I have had to find out firsthand from God just how much he requires of us to forgive. And doesn't it seem unfair after what they did to us? It does seem unfair, doesn't it? Yeah, I, I feel you. It did to me. When I saw the scripture that said, if you don't forgive, your heavenly father won't forgive you. I was like, well, do you know what they did to me? Do you know how that hurt? Well, guess what? God is able, and I'm going to tell you how he's able after I share this with you. When we consider all that Jesus Christ went through, the one who had committed no sin. Now, we know as children, nobody has to teach us to lie. Nobody has to tell us how to tell a lie, to steal, to sneak around and disobey. Nobody has to tell us that. We are bent to doing that. That's what the Bible means when it says we are born and shapen in iniquity. It comes natural. Right. So, but with Jesus Christ, there was no sin. There has never been nor ever will be any sin in Jesus Christ. So, whatever he got punished for, it wasn't for what he did. It was for all of our sins, past, present, and future. There are people who haven't even been born yet who he died for. Mm -hmm. Now, listen to this. He made every breathing human being, every entity, every creature crawling, flying, swimming, whatever. And listen. Visible or invisible, there is nothing that has been made that God did not make. Now, when God said, let us make heaven and earth, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are one. All right. So Jesus was there at the very beginning. And listen, listen to this. His own creation, his own handiwork punished him. For sins he never committed. When you look at the fact that he took all those beatings. You know how, you, how they used to beat slaves on their backs and it would just slice their meat open. You know how they spit on Jesus? How they shoved that crown of thorns on his head? I can't even imagine the level of pain he suffered for our sakes. For your sake and mine. I don't even want to imagine it. But guess what? Even the people who inflicted the pain on him. Even the people who, who nailed the, those spikes through his, his uh, Achilles heel or whatever you want to call it. And through his, uh, his wrists. The ones that laughed at him and mocked him while he was up on the cross dying. Imagine the humiliation. This wasn't done in the back in the corner in the dark. This was done in open public before everyone. And it hurts to be humiliated in front of people. Now you combine that with the pain they inflicted on his body. And guess what? He forgave, did he not? Jesus forgave. And his forgiveness was available to Judas, 
who betrayed him, turned him in for 30 pieces of silver. His forgiveness for, was for the ones who nailed him to the cross, for the ones who slashed his back open with the whips and mercilessly beat him, for those that spit on him, for those that laughed at him and mocked him. His forgiveness was available to all of them if they were willing to receive it. But guess what? Not all were willing. Only those who were willing received his forgiveness. But he was willing to forgive all. We have to be willing to forgive all. There's an old expression that we say in the church in Christendom called, it, it goes like this, do what Jesus would do or do what Jesus did. However, what would Jesus do? All of these little things that we say. And we can, we can compare ourselves, our attitudes, our feelings, our actions, our words to what he would do. And you know that in every case, when they asked him in the New Testament, well, how many times do we have to forgive? Seven times? Well, Jesus took that into ad infinitum, in essence, by saying 70 times seven. In other words, every time they hurt you, forgive. Now, I'm going to share this with you. If I'm in a burning car, and the enemies are standing around waiting to watch me burn and scream and holler from the flames. And God speaks to me and says, get out of the car, open the door, and jump out on this side, and you will not be hurt. Well, I'm going to jump and not be hurt. But this is how sorry some of us are. We don't realize it. It's a mindset. It's a victim mindset, and we have to be careful not to self-destruct for the sake of someone else who hurt us. If you sit in that car and say, my enemies are watching, I'm going to die in this flame, I'm going to go down in flames so they can see just how badly they hurt me. No, they're going to walk away thinking, boy, he sure was crazy. Why didn't he just get out? They won't even get the message. And half of them, if they did, wouldn't feel any guilt. So, this is another way of saying it. And I've heard this, uh, this example a lot of times. It's like opening up a bottle of poison. I've done this before. Okay. And you see the skull and the crossbones. And you decide you're going to drink all that poison. chuck a luck a luck a luck a luck mm. Look, okay, and when you get to drinking the poison, you're sitting there waiting to die. You're sitting there expecting to see death overtake your enemy. You're waiting for them to die. Well, they didn't drink the poison, you did. And that is what we do. We poison ourselves. We poison our lives. We poison our minds for their sake so that they'll feel guilty. We poison and self-destruct and hurt ourselves so that they will see how badly they've hurt us. It ain't gonna happen. They don't even they don't even have a clue of what they've done to you. So what God wants us to do for our sakes is to move on and heal. And one thing you have to remember, God is so fair. He will stack the deck in your favor. He will never require and command something of you that he can't enable you to do. He will empower you with the ability and the willingness to obey in forgiveness. He will enable you to forgive the, the, the worst atrocities that have occurred in your life. That's how fair God is. What he requires he equips for the task. So knowing that you don't want to forgive, that's fine. Lord, I don't want to forgive. If, if they died today, tomorrow, I'd dance on their grave. Yeah, I, I hate them with a cruel hatred. I'd murder them if I could just get away with it. 
and let them those die slowly so I can make them suffer. Oh yeah, be real, be honest about it. But guess what? All you have to do in the midst of all that is say, Lord, if it's that important to you, if you really want me to, I don't see why you would, but if you really want me to forgive, and it really is for me, then would you give me the ability, because I don't have it. And you will be shocked as I was when it happened for me. When God strategically makes you cross these people's paths over months and years and you will find that the anger, the bitterness, the hatred, the knot, the lump is gone. You didn't do it. You know God did that. Even the hatred is gone. And you find yourself smiling at someone that you couldn't smile at before. Only God can free you up like that. They are no longer a part of your fiber. They are no longer the monkey on your back. Thank God for miracles because he's able to perform it for you as well as me. God bless you as you venture into your levels of forgiveness. Amen.